Today is the second day high schools in New York can hold high-risk winter sports practices if they choose, but many fine arts programs, even phys ed classes, remain sidelined. New State Senator John Mannion wants that to change. He joins me now. Senator, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, Jeff. Um, so you're not just saying it. You're not just coming on here, not tweeting it. You're actually sending a formal letter to the governor about phys ed and fine arts. What is it that you're trying to get across to him in that letter? Well, uh, I think that we, we've seen is that um, if we follow safe protocols, that that things can be done in the right way. And our students have been going a very long time. Uh, their lives have been disrupted. We need a little bit of normalcy for them. And I do believe that you have a lot of people who are in the fine arts who are saying, if sports can do this, then we can do this. And it is part of fulfilling that um, that need to make sure that kids' physical well-being and their mental well-being is held at a premium. So um, uh, the people who are helping these kids want it, the kids want it, the families want it, and because we're participating in activities that all have a level of risk, and that's for adults as well, mm -hmm. that uh, there's a very narrow window of time for these kids, and I think we can advocate for them and advocate for them in a safe manner. I always wonder, Senator, um, Mayor Walsh did this a few weeks back, a formal letter to the governor. How effective is that? Why do you, why do you guys do that? Does it really get their attention somehow? Well, if we don't do it, then we don't know if this mm -hmm. voice is being heard. Mm -hmm. So it's something that, um, I utilize and other elected officials utilize to say, we really mean this. This is a priority for us. And of course, we have to be judicious in, in the ones that we send. But we know that kids have gone without these activities for a very long time. We know a lot more about the virus today than we did nine months ago. And therefore, um, these kids, they follow safe protocols. I've, I've seen it personally. And therefore, I think it was the right time to send a letter and to make sure that um, that this is a priority for many of my constituents back in the district. Probably won't look like some of the video we're seeing here of pre-pandemic performances, but just like high-risk sports, they have a series of protocols, county health department approvals, masks. Um, is that the similar type of thing you would see for, for instance, fine arts, that that's how they would work? Absolutely, and I would rely on the experts and I would rely on the people who are um, know this world to say this is what really is safe. And because we have made a decision across this state that this is something that kids need, they need to participate in sports, they need to express themselves in the fine arts, and it's really a, an equity issue, which is not just that for fine arts and sports, but also that many of our students across the state who can afford to have um, private lessons or can afford to participate on travel teams, they're doing that. Mm. So um, it should really be available to all kids but with an emphasis always on safety. Senator, we've done such a great job of really the core piece of education of getting kids, even if it's a hybrid method, if they want some in-person learning here. So when we start dumping high-risk sports, uh, the fine arts, things like that, more and more in there, are we potentially jeopardizing the re really, you know, that core education piece or can we do it all? So every, everything has a level of risk and we know more about this virus than we did ever before. What we have done over the course of several months now is to make sure that we put an emphasis on safety and that we have prioritized as much as we can in-person learning. But the window for these students is narrow and it's closing and therefore um, I think they've proven and the schools have proven that they can follow safe protocols and that's why I think this is the time as that window closes to uh, to move forward in a safe manner. I have time for one last quick one here and it's a slightly different topic. The governor announced today um, that he was going to be including the developmentally disabled into that 1B, the eligible now for getting that vaccine. Something big for you. You've pushed for that. You're the chair of the Senate Committee on Disabilities. How good a news is that for you today? It's great news. You know, it's not it's not necessarily good news for me. It's good news for these families. Uh, this population, the data is out there that when situations happen like this, we're in the midst of a pandemic, a public health crisis, that the data shows that they're at risk. And 
we needed to make sure that they were a priority and it's it's part of our job you know it's part of my job to make sure that we highlight this and you know i did put in writing that we need to make sure that this group is prioritized because of the challenges that many of them face and the challenges that just come with the vaccination process specifically for this population therefore um I, this is good news for the families of New York State and good news for the individuals that uh, have these challenges. State Senator John Mannion, I know you're a busy man. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it.